This tutorial introduces you to the concept of creating a component. Today, we will learn about component overview, component contract, and an example of creating a component. Components are the central facet of the Visualizer 8 release, and they allow a user to expose complex, repeatable UX patterns using simple properties. The new components framework is built for native and web, for mobile, tablet, and desktop. Components are truly cross-platform, built on iOS human interface guidelines and Android material design guidelines as well as the modern web standards for HTML5 output. Components include what is known as a component contract, which provides a configuration layer for its users to drag, drop, configure, and extend components to build an end-to-end -end app. Components don't end with the front end. All the middleware aspects of a component, including the data model, integration services, and logic are packaged and included in the component contract when the user drags and drops the component onto the visualizer canvas. This makes every aspect of the app component modular and gives the user the ability to combine every aspect of an app together with ease. A few examples of components available in the marketplace are a login component, a list detail component, and a sliding component. These components span end-to-end -end between the front-end and the back-end and can be configured through their contract. Now, let us see how these components are created using a simple example of an email component. This component will be created to accept an email ID and validate for the correct syntax and business rules. It may be used in any application that requires a user to enter an email ID. We will start with an existing Kony application. Here, I'll first navigate to the Templates tab in the Project Explorer window. Next, I will click on Component and then click on New. You will notice two options, Component without contract and Component with contract. A component without a contract does not provide the configuration layer to abstract the complex business logic of a component. This may be useful in scenarios where the component creator would like to expose the business logic as part of the component. In our example here, we will create a component with a contract to provide a configuration layer. Every component has a namespace and a name to uniquely identify the component in a user's project. I will provide a namespace to this component as user entry and name it as email field and click OK. Once I do this, you will notice that Visualizer creates a new component under the component node. Every component contains an outer UI container which acts as a placeholder to drag and drop widgets and design my UI, and a modules folder which contains the controllers to define the business logic in the component. Next, we will define the UI for the component. For this tutorial, I have gone ahead and added widgets to define the UI needed for our email ID component. It contains a text box and a line to highlight the success and failure of validations on the text box. The line turns red in case a validation fails. Now that we have the UI defined, let's add a contract to the component. Before we do that, let us dig a little deeper into how a component contract is defined. A component contract is a wrapper on a component which masks the complex implementation of the component, exposes a simplified set of configurations, and allows for easy extension and updates to the component. The contract allows a component creator to define the component properties, events, and methods. The properties, events, and methods can either be passed through, which are the configurations elevated from the existing widget, or can be custom configurations defined by the creator of the component. Visualizer version 8 provides extensive tooling for component creation and management. Let us now create the contract. First, I will define a few of my existing widget properties to be passed through. I will select the widget, and in the property panel, I will right-click on the property and select Add Property to Component. This will elevate the existing widget property as a pass-through property for my component. I will add the placeholder text and maximum character length as the two pass-through properties for this component. All the properties of the component can be managed through the Manage Properties console. This is available in the property panel for the component. The pass-through properties elevated through the widgets are already listed here. In case I need to, I can add additional pass-through properties from here as well. The display name is the name that is displayed for the property as part of the component configuration, while the programmatic name is the name that is used to access the property through code. You can also define the custom properties through this console. Let us switch to custom at the top and add a new property to validate the minimum character length. Let me click on add and add the property name. 
Next, I will provide the display name and select the type of property as integer. We will also configure a default value for this property. In this case, let me set this as 3. We can group together properties using the group option. By default, all new properties are created under the general group. We can also define the access permissions of the property to be read or read write. To complete my property configuration, I will click on apply. Once I do this, the properties appear in the properties tab for my component. Similarly, I will define a few events for this component. First, I will navigate to the widget and add ondone as my pass-through event. Next, using the manage events console under the actions tab of the component, I will add two custom events, on validation success and on validation failed. Now that we have defined the properties and events needed for our component, let us add some business logic and business rules to complete the functionality. The business logic for the component contract is defined as part of the controller. Controllers for components are generated with the stubs defined for the component constructor and getter and setter methods for the component properties. In this example, in our controller, I will define a default value for the custom property in my constructor. Next, I will define a getter and setter for that custom property. The getters and setters are used to retrieve and set values to the property. For each custom property, the contract needs to have a getter and a setter. Next, I will define a function on text edit, which contains the business logic to validate the email ID against the business rules while the user is entering the text. Finally, I will define a function to change the color of the line to highlight any errors. Now that the business logic is in place, I will link the code to the widgets through the action. Now our component is ready. Let us use this in our application. In this project, I have a need to use email ID as part of the login screen. To use the component, I can either drag and drop it in the form or I can select it and then click on insert into. Let me drag the component onto my form. Now on the properties panel, notice the properties for this component. It shows only the properties we had exposed to the component and abstracts everything else. Let me change the placeholder text to email ID. Notice how it immediately reflects on the canvas. Using these configurations, I can now easily configure the properties for the component. Let us run this application on the Visualizer app review to view the implementation of the component. As designed, I have to log in with the email ID field. Once I start typing the email ID, notice how the color of the line below the text box changes to red in case I have an incorrect email ID entered. This was an initial overview of the component creation. For more information, please refer to our documentation and tutorials on developer.coney.com.